The Legend of Zelda is one huge, awesome mystery. I couldn't decide on just one theory or topic to talk about. So here are our top five theories, facts, or secrets about The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Number one, secrets on the wall. The Shrine of Resurrection where Link was first awoken from Breath of the Wild, we can see to me what looks like a map of constellations on the wall. However, I don't think there is a map of the stars, but rather a secret map for the locations of shrines within Hyrule. We see the same technology, design, and blue glow among other things within the chamber that relates it to the shrines. We know that shrines that have not yet been unlocked glow an orange light, but glow blue once the entrance has been opened. If we look at the walls inside the chambers, we see these constellations have an orange glow and connect a path to the next orange glow. Perhaps as we complete or unlock a shrine and its color changes from orange to blue, one of these orange lights will also change to blue, which would not only give us a path or map of each of the shrines, but also allow us to visually see which we have and have not completed or unlocked yet. It's also important to note that each of the shrines also have a path or constellation above its entrance that may correlate to others in the Shrine of Resurrection. Number two, the Koroks. The Koroks, an evolution of the Kakiri, appear once again in the Zelda series. A lot of people suggest that the inclusion of the Koroks is proof that the game falls in the adult timeline after the Wind Waker. However, I would like to suggest that if the Koroks are a natural evolution or a natural state of the Kakiri, it would make sense for the Kakiri to eventually evolve or revert back into the Koroks without the need of a Great Flood. However, that isn't the reason for the Koroks appearing on this list. The reason is the purpose of the Koroks in this game, and I think it's quite obvious. But some fans still seem to be confused. The Koroks are to Breath of the Wild as the Gold Skulltulas are to Ocarina of Time, or Mai Mai's are to A Link Between Worlds. When speaking to a Korok, we find out they seem surprised we're able to find them, and continue on to say that they're all hiding in different areas. Well, let's say that we have 100 Koroks hiding throughout Hyrule. They will be one of this game's collectibles. Once you find 10 Koroks, you get a prize. Once you find 20, 30, 40, 50, you get better and better prizes, just as with other Zelda games. But what do you get for finding them all? Who knows, but I'm sure it'll be worth it. Number 3, The Guardians. The Guardians in Breath of the Wild are obviously made from Sheikah technology. They have the same design as the Shrines, the Sheikah Slate, and other Sheikah technology found within the game. However, they seem very determined to get rid of Link, while the Sheikah are all here to help him. Not only this, but most Sheikah technology share the same blue glow. But we see a distinct orange glow from the large Guardians. The same glow that we also see coming from Calamity Ganon. This leads many to believe that Ganon has cursed or possessed these guardians and used them to help win the war on Hyrule. Number 4. The Shrines In The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, it seems evil has corrupted most of the land. Even the sacred temple of time is lying in ruins. However, from what we have seen, there are some safe havens lying in secret across Hyrule. These safe havens are the shrines created by the Sheikah. These shrines are used as a test for us to prove ourselves to be the true hero. At the end of each shrine, we come across a member of the Sheikah tribe who has been peacefully waiting our return to bless us with the spirit orb. All throughout these shrines, we see evidence of Sheikah technology and even have to use their own Sheikah slate just to enter, not to mention the several puzzles inside which also require it. It is thought that the Sheikah built these shrines as a final defense against Ganon's army and as a test for the true hero. However, this may not be the first time we have seen underground safe havens created by the Sheikah in the Zelda series. If we take a look at Ocarina of Time, we see holes hidden throughout Hyrule Field, usually covered by rocks, boulders, or requiring the use of magic songs and bombs just to enter. These holes usually also contain a small treasure for our hero. In Ocarina of Time, we find several Sheikah stones, which are the only reference to these secret holes. A few examples include they say that there's a secret near a tree in Kakariko Village. They say that there's a secret on the road to Lake Hylia. They say that the small holes in the ground that you can find all over Hyrule make perfect breeding grounds for bugs. With the Sheikah Stones or Gossip Stones being the only reference of these holes, and some holes even containing their own Gossip Stones, it would make sense that these holes were created by the Sheikah as a place to hide from evil. Perhaps the shrines we see in Breath of the Wild began as these very holes from Ocarina of Time, but were expended upon and fortified to further protect from whatever evil is present. Number 5. Ganon 
In Breath of the Wild, we haven't necessarily seen Ganon, but we have seen Calamity Ganon. It is thought that this is the evil within Ganon or Ganondorf manifesting itself. Perhaps the sages or goddesses unable to defeat Ganondorf as seen by evil taking over Hyrule trapped him as a last resort. They sealed him inside the castle. We have seen versions of Calamity Ganon before. Ocarina of Time and Wind Waker both had Phantom Ganon or other versions of Ganon that were just manifestations of his evil power. Some theorize that Calamity Ganon is exactly that. Whether Ganondorf is inside the castle calmly waiting his escape or completely separated from the evil inside him, and the beast we see is believed to be the pure evil that drives Ganon and Ganondorf and continues to corrupt Hyrule from the inside. What's up everyone, this is Jesse and welcome to the Enslave. I would like to thank you for watching this video. If you're a fan of my Zelda or gaming news theory or discussion videos like this, Please consider supporting this channel by donating through patreon.com slash gameoverjesse where you can get new videos early, be able to join on discussion or theory videos, get shoutouts, and tons of other great rewards. Thank you all so much for allowing me to do this, watching my videos, and especially you Alex Myers, Jonathan, The Itch Network, and John Frank for your support on Patreon.